Hi guys, welcome back to another video on my YouTube channel. So today I'm going to show you the three printer that I've been using for pretty much all of my recent projects. And this is an Cubic Cobra 2 Nail. I've had it for almost a year now. So yeah, I've got a few things to say about it. Before we get into the main stuff, I actually make a separate video on how to put these things together. I'll just play a short clip real quick so you can see how simple it is. And if you've seen it already, feel free to skip ahead and let's jump into the video. The Anacubic Cobra 2 Neo is one of four printers in the Cobra 2 series. It came around September 2023, and this one is basically the base model which is perfect for beginners who want a fast and affordable ABM printer to get started. The build volume is actually pretty solid. It's about 220 by 220 by 250 millimeters. For me, it is enough to be most of the stuff that I like. Things like robot arms, or the RC car, and a bunch of random DIY projects. And honestly, it's been doing a great job so far. At first, I didn't expect too much about the Sprinter, but after using it for a while, it surprised me. The Anacubic Cobra 2 Neo comes with an auto bed leveling system, which means you don't have to use a piece of paper to level the bed manually like you would do on some cheaper printers. Honestly, switching from manual to auto bed leveling makes a huge difference for me. Back when I was using the Kindred KB3S Pro, I had to spend hours leveling the bed, and even after that, once I printed a few parts, I still had to readjust it. It was annoying and just loud out everything. This printer used an inductive sensor to scan 25 points across the bed and create a surface map. After that, it still a separate touch sensor to figure out exactly how to fall the sensor is from the field plate. So your Z offset is way more accurate right from the start. It's important to note that auto leveling can only tell you where the sensor is located, not the nozzle itself. So sometimes you may still need to adjust the Z height during the test ring to make sure the nozzle distance is not too far or too close to the bed. What I like the most about the Sprinter is the speed. The default print speed is 150 millimeters per second, and it can go all the way up to 250 millimeters per second, which is actually twice as fast as a lot of other printers in this price range. It's way faster than my old Kingdom KB3S Pro that I used before. 
For most of my projects, especially things like robot arm or RC core, I sit with the default 150mm per second just to get a cleaner finish and it's a nice balance between the speed and print quality and honestly for the price, it's performing way better than I thought.